Hey guys, Scott here with another how-to video. Basically wanted to show you uh, how I do this job. This is a little different than my previous metal flake job. So we'll be doing this as a stripe. So we'll put stripes down the center. Uh, rear fender will probably be like two inches wide, two stripes. Front fender will be a little narrower and the tank will match the rear fender. So this is a big dog, approximately 2005. So as you can see, we've prepped these already and base coated them. Uh, this is gonna be a little unique because anytime I have a candy job, a tri-stage candy, or a metal flake job, usually medium to larger size, I will do the, the thicker color first. So in this case, we'll do the metal flake first. So the black you see here is just merely uh, an undercoat of the base coat in case we have any areas in between the uh, metal flake the black will show through makes good contrast for the uh, metal flake you can pretty much use any color you want if you got silver flake you can use a, a silver metallic ground coat I still like black even under the silver just gives it more reflection makes the flake stand out more so that's personal preference uh, I do like the black probably 95 percent of the time I'll use black as the base coat so I wanted to have these prep because you guys know how to prep and uh, base coat. So. so we'll be doing this job backwards, like I said. And uh, I'll show you guys how I mix the flake. I got another video showing that too. But we'll go back to the bench and I'll show you how to mix this and we'll get started. I will basically be spraying the areas that have the flake and more because you don't want to be less than where the area is. So I'll be spraying probably half the tank most of the front fender maybe half the half the rear fender so we'll go back to the bench i'll show you what i use and how i mix it okay we're back at the bench uh like on one of my other videos i show you how to mix this i'll show you again uh this is like i said this job's gonna be a little different because we're doing the the stripes actually first and then we'll do the black base coat last because that's a thinner and another reason why you want to do this last too is anytime you have a medium to larger flake, if you do the black first and then do the stripes, your edge will not be that straight because the flakes will be overlapping the, uh, uh, the fine line. So what I'm going to use, it's 7 o'clock on Monday morning. It's 55 out, about 58 out here in uh, Tampa, Florida area. So I'm sure you guys up north are jealous of us. but. Uh, yeah, probably Tuesday. It's supposed to get up to 80, so. Here's, here's what I use, MR-185. That's fast reducer. I usually use that all the time for the, uh, uh, for the metal flake, for the smaller jobs, for the, metal, or for the uh, motorcycle jobs. This is my color blender. I had one of my followers ask me if this was to blend uh, clear coats and things like that. This is actually a base clear. So I like using that, it's fairly cheap versus, uh, I believe it's House of Color SG100. I used to use that, buy it by the court, but this is uh, pretty inexpensive for a gallon. If you're doing one job, you only need a quart, but we do quite a, I use this quite a bit. So I'll go through a gallon once every, probably two months or so. So I'll put a link to this. It's MRT-500, made by Medallion. So rubber seal, I guess, is the actual brand name. And the flakes we're going to use is F22-2. So I believe they call this 2 because uh, the F22 original ones were actually a slightly larger flake. I would consider this more of a medium flake. So I'm going to try to hold the camera here and show you how I mix this. So basically, I just guess. So, how much flake I'll need. Not a whole lot, since we're just doing stripes. If I was painting the whole thing, all the parts, I'd probably want about twice that. I'll take the color blender. This will bind it together. This will hold the flake to the black. So, I don't put too much... So you can see there. Now reducer, I do use quite a bit. Of course, I chose a full gallon here. 
So I'll probably spill it all over the place. Not too bad. Brand new gallon here. Yeah. I use quite a bit. Probably 300%, 400%. The binder will hold it together. You want to stir it up real good. Again, like I mentioned on my previous video on this, you want to be ready to go. So I've already tacked off the parts outside, blew them off and tacked them off. I got my gun ready. It's basically just a 1.4, but 1.4 is good for medium sized flake. Anything bigger, you probably want to go 1.5 plus. The siphon fed even works better. So I'm just using a Awada LPH 400, 1.4 setup. And you want to be ready to spray this stuff. So, so uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut down the camera here. I'll take a video once I spray the areas and show you how I do this. I'll be doing this video in segments, so this will probably take me two, three days since I got to clear coat it, resand it, and then we do the black. But I'll show segments, video segments along the way here. So I will uh, be back and show you the areas I sprayed. Okay, I've got these done uh, as much as I'm going to spray them with the flake. So as you can see, you can, you can see some of the black through the flake. So that's fine. Really makes the flake actually sparkle a little more. So I forgot to mention too, I'm putting a stripe down the side here too. So you can see how rough it is. Put about, uh, I'll probably put about four coats of high solids clear on here. So this would actually be a pretty cool paint job if you wanted to clear coat it, re-sand it nice and flat, and then fade black back up into that. Kind of gives you an idea what it would look like. So that will kill any flakes that land on here, plus it'll already be smooth when you put the black on there. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, clear coat these, and then we're gonna re-sand them. I'll mask up the stripes and then spray the black around it, pull the tape off, and then re-clear it again. We should be done. I might have to clear coat it one more time after that, but most likely that'll be it. One thing of note, uh, make sure you don't put any runs in this either. So if you put a run in there, you can fix it, but what you gotta do is wait for it to dry, sand out the run, and then you have to blend some more black in there, do a nice blend, it makes it easier to uh, fade the flake back into there and then you'll be good to go. So anyway, that's it for this segment. I'll be clear coating. I'll show you what it looks like after that. And uh, hope you're enjoying the video. Hopefully uh, you learned something here. I think this is my second or third metal flake job on video. So actually I've done uh, quite a few. <laughs> So you want to put enough clear on here so you don't sand, when you sand it flat to get it ready for the black, you want to make sure that uh, you don't sand through because sometimes these flakes are not blue all the way through. So you may end up with a hint of uh, speckled silver flakes if they are coated silver flakes. And uh, I'll show you a way to, I'll show you a little tip to fix those too. So. Anyway, I might have done that already, but uh, just in case, again, this video is a little different because we're doing these uh, parts in stripes. So, hope you're enjoying the video. Uh, until next segment. Okay, I just got done clearing. A uh, couple notes, a couple tips for you. Uh, as you saw, I sprayed these outside. Uh, I've sprayed these inside the booth before, metal flake jobs, and they absolutely uh, destroy a spray booth. So it clings to the sides, clings to the floor, and it takes weeks before it's completely cleaned up. So if you uh, decide to do this and you have access to a spray booth, try to spray these outside first, the metal flake. I actually sprayed the black in here on Friday. We took them out front. I did the metal flake outside, brought them back in, and then I did the, uh, the clear coat. So also, when they were outside, I let them dry for probably about an hour, hour and a half. So before bringing them in to clear, let that base clear, get good and dry, because I put like five coats of metal flake on here. So always make sure you're wearing your uh, protective equipment. 
You want your uh, respirator, not a particle mask. Particle masks do nothing, that's for dust. So make sure you wear a charcoal respirator. And also, once you're done, what I do is wear a jacket, just a, usually it's really a paint suit and I just cut it in half and that makes a jacket. So I do that and uh, I throw that away after a flake job because we do a lot of black jobs and I don't want any flakes to end, end up in them. So, and also uh, the spray sock, we just wash, that's the last time I use it. I'll just take it home and wash. I got like uh, probably 25 socks, spray socks. And uh, one other thing is the bung. So the fuel bung here on the aftermarket tanks, they're welded in and smoothed in. So once you get this much material, you wanna trim this out, take off the old tape, retape before finishing. So you want fresh tape on there. If you keep building up material, we still got the black and even more clear on here. You'll never get this tape off without an issue. So be sure on thicker paint jobs, even candies and things like that, and you have another step to bring them in the booth, go ahead and remove the tape and, uh, you know, retape re that. So it doesn't take more than a couple minutes. So next step here, we're going to resand these pretty flat. We'll DA them 600. We will hand sand 600. And then we'll wet sand with 1000 grit. I'll mask up the stripes. So I'll show you what they look like after I get them masked up. And then I will spray the black. So again, we're doing this job backwards. We're doing the flake stripes first, and then we're doing the, uh, the black last. Makes it much easier. You can still see it's kind of grainy. That's not dirt. That's the flakes raised up. So no big deal. We'll sand this flat. I have a stripe on the side too, probably a three inch wide stripe. So thanks for watching. Thumbs up. And uh, hope you liked the video. Thank you. Okay guys, it's Tuesday a.m. Uh, the parts are all dry, the metal plate job. So I figured I'd throw in a segment where uh, I show you actually how I sand these. I pretty much use the same process. If I'm re-clearing, or when I re-clear, or if I'm adding graphics and then re-clearing. So basically, I use this DA. It's a Velcro back, soft pad. So it conforms, especially for motorcycles. It works good on cars too. Uh, it's nice and soft, conforms to curves, especially on motorcycles. So I use 600 grit, and this again is to re-clear. So 600 grit works great. If you plan on going ahead and buffing and you got a show quality car, you can use 800 grit to start with, and that's a whole different process. So anyway, I got this DA here. I wanted to show you something too. This here, they got different throws, which I forget the size of this, but this is a, a mild throw. You can tell it's, it's like a finesse DA. Uh, also, this DA is pretty much the same. You can tell not much orbit right there. Now this is what I call my body DA. So it's more aggressive. You can see the throw. Versus this one. I like using this on the uh, dry sand before clearing. So this is Velcro back. So basically what I do, I get this pretty smooth. Doesn't have to be perfectly perfectly dull because we're also going to wet sand this too so just do the bigger bigger areas you can finish it off when you're wet sanding now sometimes when I got graphics and there's a nice thick edge or a bad thick edge I guess it depends on how you look at it you do this process to knock, knock it down before re-clearing. You can see it didn't come out too bad. Again, this uh, this flake's kind of a mild flake. Medium size, I would say. A larger flake, of course, this would be real raw. A little harder to sand. I probably would have added another coat of clear, too. Okay, that's good. 
See, it's not perfectly flat. Now what you can do, this is Velcro back. What I do, take a little piece of scotch Bright, put it right there, and then I'll go a lot. Now this works great when you got graphics. You can knock down the graphics by itself. You don't have to do the whole panel. But this I'm just showing you. Now even though this is the same piece of paper that we used on the DA when you hand sand, and this goes the same for uh, body sand paper, that when you hand sand, it's more aggressive than it is on a DA. So see how quick that knocks it down? Because I'm hand sanding. Okay, that's good for this. Maybe a little bit more. You can see the peel from the flake. Have you ever noticed when a uh, paint job comes out real smooth and somebody looks at it? Man, that clear laid out real nice. But when it's runs, it's like, man, that painter really screwed it up. It's never the painter's fault when it comes out real nice. They never get the credit. It's always to clear itself. So anyway, lightly blow this off. Okay, now we go to the wet sand. I'm using 1000 grit, 3M, I tri-fold it, fits in the palm of your hand. I like these spray bottles, they've lasted quite a while. They're a little more expensive, I think like 8, 10 bucks, something like that. So basically, you want to wet sand the complete part. 1000 grit is good, never have any issue if I added graphics to this, which again, we're doing this backwards. So I guess technically I am adding graphics. So you wanna get it nice and dull, as flat as possible. Doesn't have to be perfect. Try not to check it till you're completely done. Or unless if you got a big fender that has a big side or something like that, you can do one side, check it, do the other side, check it, and then do this. As you can see, I'm just doing the whole thing. A smaller fender. Plenty of water, no soap in it. You can use soap if you wanted to. It doesn't take much. For that bottle, probably eh, five, ten drops. Doesn't take much. Shake it up. I'm just going to show you this part, of course the other two parts will be the same. Okay, and then we squeegee it, just to check. Make sure you get corners real good, edges good. Okay, let's check it. Okay, as you can see, you can see this is nice and smooth. Thousand grit is great for, uh, again, you don't have any peeling problems. Uh, being that this is a day old, using uh, our fast to medium reducer, it will adhere to this very good because the clear will kind of, I don't want to say reactivate, but it will meld in. So, anyway. Then you want to wipe it off real good. Make sure you get all this uh, clear residue off. So, which usually we use wipe alls. You can use paper towels, what have you. So this one's ready for graphics. So uh, we'll mask. I'll tape off this area, like I said before, for the stripes. 
and then I'll spray the rest of it black, pull the tape off, and presto, we'll have some uh, metal flake stripes. Okay, I got my uh, graphics laid out. So, a couple things I wanted to point out is always make sure that you outline your graphics or flames or whatever in fine line. Don't use masking tape because masking tape will leave fuzzy edges for the most part. I mean, definitely want to use fine line. This is orange eighth inch tape. It's my favorite to use on uh, straight graphics or on cars because you got bigger area. So eighth inch tape is good. Smaller intricate designs like on motorcycles, like flames, I always use 16th inch tape. So some people can use the uh, eighth inch tape, but it, ultimately you usually end up with uh, bigger flames, bigger, <clears throat> bigger, bigger area. It's harder to make tighter turns. So that's why I use it on straight graphics. So again, this is our metal flake. So we mask up the area that will remain metal flake. So this area around here will be black. So we're doing reverse graphics on this. We're actually doing the graphics first. And like I said before, because this is a thicker, thicker paint, the metal flake, if this was candy, I'd do it the same way. So, and then you use the black to kill all the surface, uh, you know, that's showing right here. That will be ultimately your base color. So as you can see, I did add a couple graphics to it. The customer doesn't know this. He pretty much left it open for me to, you know, do what I want. But his basic thing, he wanted some stripes down the center. So I did add these on the side of the tank too. And I mentioned, we kind of agreed that this would look good. It choked more metal flake too on the side of the tank. So I still got my inch and a half graphics down the center there. And then the front, front fender, I also added same type of graphics to tie in. I did go with inch and a half on the front too, so it's inch and a half throughout. So I'll show you how I achieved this. The graph, oh, one thing I wanted to show on the tank, you can see I did re-tape the bung. Obviously you want to do that before you lay the graphics because once you put the graphics down, you can't do it. So you want to make sure your ends are tucked in real good. And this is good here on the rear of the rear fender. So anyway, that is finished off with the thousand grit that I showed you in the earlier segment. So this is how I achieved the graphics, the graphic size. First thing I did was lay the half inch tape right down the center of each part. And then what I did, I outlined that in orange tape. So then I put inch and a half tape inside that so I used no measuring tape on this so I used regular masking tape on all this as my guides so this will remain here because this is where the metal flake stripe will be this will go bye bye this will be black so realistically the stripes are going to be a little wider than inch and a half so we have eighth inch tape we have half inch that will be our gap in between the stripes and then once I get these masked up, you got eighth inch, you have the inch and a half, and you'll have another eighth inch. This will go bye-bye, like I said. So this will pull off once you get your stripes laid, and you'll end up with this. Now, like I said in my previous videos, I use quarter inch as my insurance tape. This merely covers any gap that might be between this eighth inch and this tape so or your fine line and tape you know just in this particular job it's inch and a half and eighth inch so i just use this i'll run it down the center try to leave like a sixteenth of an inch that way you know it is covered you can use eighth inch too but eighth inch uh, green tape or whatever tape you want to but uh, you know eighth inch you got a little more of a chance of going one way or the other and leaving a gap so I use quarter inch now the st stripes on the side here how I achieved these I merely used inch and a half or I'm sorry half inch tape outline that and then I use quarter inch insurance tape to fill any space in between the half inch and the eighth inch tape. So that takes care of that. You want to double check yourself, make sure all the areas 
are masked up good because if you're over if you're over you could still end up with a gap so you want to make sure that all this is covered so what I'll do next I'll go ahead and spray the black base coat on here let it dry probably 10 15 minutes not too long really and then I'll pull this tape off and then I will go ahead and clear it and then I'll do another segment showing exactly how this came out so it's gonna look great out in the Sun so show you another view front of the tank I kind of curled those in so again you want to make sure you use fine line uh, link below in the description where you can purchase the eighth inch so 6306 is the 16th inch uh, 3m tape so anyway i'm gonna get rolling here so i'll do another segment and that will probably do it maybe i'll put one uh, maybe i'll take the parts out in the sun too and show you what it looks like so anyway hope you're enjoying the video thanks for watching okay i just got done wet sand and buffing the set as you can see it's completely done looks beautiful so the sun is not out right now so i'm just gonna take a picture under these led lights so i wet sand 1500 uh, used a block over the uh, graphics just to get them flat as possible. You can see the sparkle is beautiful. So overall, came out super nice. Customers should be very, very happy. See the stripe on the side of the tank. You can also see on the older style bungs where they're welded in. Uh, I took some clear and some black, mixed it together and put some eighth inch tape around there and just brushed in some black it helps prevent the fumes from getting to the edge of the flake and the base coat black so little insurance uh, there so and make sure you know the customer needs to make sure that he has a a cap with a good gasket on there they all have like an o-ring on there and you want to make sure that's in good shape because the the fumes will start eating into the uh the base coat clear coat and the paint so hopefully you guys learned something from this video came out very very nice so i appreciate you watching thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and uh, more videos to come appreciate it